Uh, okay, so hello everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening for people in different regions. So today we are again at Open Dais, and uh, today we have a next uh, interesting ninth session. It will be about uh, data analysis in the complex uh, biomolecular systems. Uh, we have very interesting speaker, uh, Nikolai, Nikolai Shietskoy from Belarusian State University. Uh, please uh, guide us today around this topic. I think I'll stop share. So you will be able to start uh, sharing your screen. Uh, hello, can you see my presentation? Uh, not yet. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now we can see. So I will switch off my my video uh, and so please uh, guide us today. So please take a stage. Okay. Uh, let me start. Uh, good evening. Good morning and good day, uh, dear participants of our seminar. I would like to welcome you to my lecture and thank you very much, Ivan, for uh, your uh, kind introduction of my. Uh, lecture and uh, myself uh, so today lecture is uh, the title is data analysis and complex biomolecular systems uh few, few, first i would like to say a few words about myself so i'm a uh, assistant professor at the department of system analysis and computer modeling of, of the faculty radio physics and computer uh, technology of the russian state university from uh, minsk city and belarus and uh, to, today uh, uh, my lecture will be about um, my scientific work and um, it will be organized in four parts. I will introduce you to the uh, research I'm conducting, then I will, uh, uh, on, on the data analysis, uh, then I will explain uh, methodology of data analysis approach that have been developed and then applications. Uh, two uh, examples of applications for, from fluorescence spectroscopy area will be uh, discussed. And finally, uh, I will present results on the uh, development of conception and also practical re realization of digital platform, which integrate the data analysis approach. Okay, let me start uh, from the introduction and uh, I will try to briefly in introduce to you the area of research and what uh, we are doing. So the rapid development of computer technology, high performance instruments, computer and system, experimental equipment, and cloud storage of information give impetus to active development of machine learning and uh, big data technology, as you, of course, know. Uh, uh, this is well known, and this is from the one side, and from the second side, we have uh, computer simulations. Uh, the use of computer simulation method to solve optimization problems in the analysis of big data opens a new opportunities for analysis, for analysis, researchers, and engineers in the field of a high technology interdisciplinary research. Uh, this can be examples as exam examples bioinformatics, biomedicine, pharmacy, food industry, and so on. Uh, the complexity and uh, diversity of machine learning methods used in tandem with simulation modeling algorithms require development of new system approach to solve the problem problems of complex analysis of biophysical information in modern experiments and super large data sets. So the idea what uh, uh, we would like to do, we would like to combine uh, recent uh, high throughput techniques uh machine learning and uh, computer simulations in, in one approach to have uh, advantage uh, to profit from from this uh, combination of uh, data analysis and computer um, simulation techniques all these novel uh, tools and uh, we would like to apply this to a particular area of research to fluorescent spectroscopy to fluorescent spectroscopy uh, which uh, uh, this is a group of uh, experimental methods uh, which are used to study um, molecular properties and uh, devices based on, on these uh, techniques. So the goal of this research uh, uh, thus is devel uh, development of compute, uh, computational approach based on simulation model and machine learning algorithm to process fluorescence spectroscopy data 
used to investigate complex biomolecular uh, systems. Uh, what, what are the objects and subjects of our research? Object is uh, optical, physical, and biochemical uh, processes in cellular and artificial biomolecular systems, biomolecular compounds, uh, decision support system for uh, conducting uh, physical experiments, and subject uh, is uh, uh, mathematical models, methods, algorithms for complex analysis of big data, and also software for advanced analysis of biophysical systems. Uh, so this is, uh, in other words, the goal of our research is to develop a computational approach which will integrate uh, both uh, machine learning uh, and uh, computer simulation. And uh, I will uh, brief uh, uh, somewhere briefly, somewhere more in, in deep, explain what does it mean the computational approach and uh, what, what is inside of this approach. And first, I would like to say some uh, what is the, in the heart of the no novelty of this approach. A uh, feature of the integrated approach is the use of simulation algorithm for reproducing biophysical process in the studied synthesis, which allows, uh, this allows many things, but I would like to increase uh, three main most important. The first one is uh, it's uh, possible to improve the evaluation of accuracy of estimated parameters of biophysical processes. Uh, second is uh, to deepen knowledge on physics and a sense of investigated process. And third is to create uh, new forecasting tools when analytical models do not exist or they are too complex or difficult to achieve to, uh, to achieve uh, due to increasing complexity of the system uh, represented by big data so this is what regards uh, machine learning uh, what about uh, computer simulation the integration of advanced um, uh, machine learning algorithms contribute to more accurate definition of uh, knowledge and patterns resulting from the analysis of large experimental data and cannot be uh, determined by a classical data analysis method. So uh, th this is still about machine learning. And uh, uh, when I say about classical analysis methods, I mean uh, usually uh, pure machine learning method, which don't use uh, physical models and mainly use the so-called model of black boxes or learning data set, uh, sets or uh, uh, samples from which we can uh, predict behavior of our object or system under study in, in future. And uh, what we would like uh, to have is uh, physical models which uh, will uh, explain or interpret the behavior of uh, uh, con uh, conducting process in our object of research. So uh, this uh, this was about uh, machine learning and uh, about uh, computer simulation or simulation modeling. Uh, so basically, we have a wide, quite broad field of mathematical modeling, and in our work, we will, will be concentrated on part, mainly on the part of this which uh, concerns stochastic modeling or simulation modeling, which is based on Monte Carlo uh, methods. Methods which are stochastic methods of modeling and are based on the use of random numbers and statistical probabilities for solving problems. Uh, traditionally, uh, Monte Carlo methods are fine applications in two directions. First one, it confirms that developed theories uh, uh, by numerical experiments. So if we have, for example, analytical uh, modeling results, uh, and then we would like to confirm it by uh, not experiment, uh, real experiment by uh, simulation experiment, we, we can uh, co construct the simulation model from the intuitive principles, what we know about our system and subject of the understudy. And then if two uh, predictions are in agreement, we, we uh, have the right to think that uh, our theory is quite correct. The second is to compare simulated and experimental data with subsequent deeper interpretation of the data in terms of simulation models. So actually, the second uh, direction is what we are going to do in our work. So the second direction is uh, will be utilized in our research. And I start uh, from the general principles of simulation modeling, which are integrated in our data analysis pipeline based on machine learning. So on this slide, you can see the structure of uh, formalization, of, uh, which is used in uh, mathematical 
or simulation models. So assume that we try to investigate some uh, object, research objects, which in our case is uh, a biophysical process or complex biomolecular systems, a system. Uh, let the uh, system be described by a mathematical model M in our notations and its structure you can see on, on this uh, picture. So we have uh, object under our study of biophysical process and we have uh, uh, mathematical models. W what, is, uh, what is important that our uh, model uh, is characteri characterized by a uh, number of features or dependent variables or inputs, we call them X, uh, and uh, also characterized by a number of uh, sensors or somehow uh, also called can be called as features but they are normally called as outputs or in, in uh, dependent variables or labels why and uh, there are this uh, uh, features of inputs and outputs we can measure properties of our uh, object in our model so the um, it's characterized by uh, Characteristic phi, which uh, could be integral, integral or differential equations. And what is important that uh, uh, um, object is characterized by physical parameters a. a. So actually, our goal is to find physical parameters a, a uh, which uh, has which uh, have physical meaning and explain uh, some processes where uh, which are current in the uh, object of research. Uh, for example, can be lifetimes, uh, energy transfer constants, molecular concentrations, and so on. And so, on. so not going uh, deeply in the details and equations, what, what I would like to say, what, what we have at the output of our model is data set or data. Data mean, it means X and Y arrays, um, matrices, and we work with, with this. So here, example, uh, I, I show you example of simulation model, quite simple, but which is also quite uh, used in uh, publications to describe energy transfer process in molecular system. So this is a, syst a molecular system of donor and acceptor molecules. You can see here donor and acceptor. Acceptor is a trap for energy, uh, which uh, is uh, uh, which can be on the donor. So this is a uh, scheme of this uh, quite a simple molecular system. Ex excitation source uh, excite donor, and donor can um, emit its energy uh, in um, form of uh, photon, which is detected at multi-channel an analyzer, or it uh, can transmit its energy with energy transfer constant KAT to acceptor. Acceptor does not emit. So if it's emit uh, energy, uh, it's uh, fluorescence, uh, fluorescent decay, then it register photon count in arrival is registered at the multi-channel analyzer. And uh, it's recorded in histogram. A delta T is a time delay, which is proportional to fluorescence lifetime, a tau D and energy transfer constant, KET to energy acceptor. So this is quite simple system can be uh, simulated using um, Monte Carlo simulations with uh, random number generators. You can see the equations for simulating this. Uh, it's a RAND uh, uh, function, uh, which uh, correspond to uniform distribution. Uh, and uh, uh, this is can be programmed in this simple way. So this is an example show how to uh, simulate energy transfer process in uh, uh, this molecular system. What is important at the end, we, re we record a data set, a data set which will be analyzed in, in terms of X and Y abbreviations. Of course, we can conduct uh, with new uh, res uh, modern experimental equipment, uh, a large amounts of this type of data set, and this uh, creates uh, new uh, um, tasks, new challenges, uh, challenges to the da big data analysis. Okay, so this was example of simulation model, and uh, we go to uh, data uh, uh, going from the general uh, 
principles or general things. So data in broad sense can be facts, text, graphics, picture, sounds, or analog or video, uh, video or digital uh, informations, which is uh, which is can be recorded, can be saved, and can be transported uh, transported for further analysis. So we can work with uh, data which are directly measured from experiments, or we or we can connect to existing databases. In this case, we need to know uh, some uh, languages of query requests, and we should be able to work with uh, data with stories. Uh, for example, by SQL uh, queries, and we can uh, create uh, from the databases uh, so-called table, machine learning table, uh, uh, example of which is shown uh, on, on this slide. So, so you, you, oh, sorry. So you, you can see the table presentation uh, of uh, uh, data in terms of metrics uh, of x and y so again i will just uh, exp explain you that we have uh, now our observations which are called e1 e2 until n number of uh, observations is n and then we have number of features or independent variables so this is uh, popular in machine learning and data mining uh, uh, abbreviations and notations so we have car features or independent variables and uh, th this is what we can measure in our experiments and the e outputs or in uh, dependent variables uh, uh, usually uh, you may see in uh, literature just one column which is called labels or outputs no, uh, in, in general case I, uh, we present here uh, more than one uh, column to our independent outputs so um, uh, multi-dimensional data set x and y is collected and then analyzed in, uh, in the data analysis approach so uh, usually uh, the relationship model, re relationship model in uh, the data can be represented as uh, dependence between uh, outcomes y and in uh, comes uh, of x uh, where c is uh, a set of uh, correspondence operations that, that transform independent uh, features x into variables y uh, using uh, machine learning, it's necessary to find functional functional tran trans transformations p, which are estimates of uh, of the operators uh, xi in their parameters theta that uh, transform the initial set of features into uh, theoretical characteristics. Uh, by, mach by machine learning models, we mean mathematical models that ensure the solutions of three and four equations three and four. So. Uh, uh, briefly exp exp explained you idea uh, so in in the view of uh, further data analysis explanation I, I mean what we have uh, what we mean uh, what we are meaning uh, under the data uh, what we have uh, machine learning and uh, computer simulation now we go to data analysis pipeline which is proposed in our work again uh, let's uh, go in uh, from simple things and then to more complicated things to explain uh, what uh, do we mean by our um, uh, approach and notation so on, on this slide you can see uh, uh, thinking or discussion how can be organized research under under the object of the study of course in uh, we can start from two directions first one is uh, direct real experiment and second one is uh, numeric numerical or computational experiments so if we have object of our research we can plan uh, we can plan real experiments the uh, flowchart of this uh, planning you can see here in this slide so we have object of uh, our research and uh, uh, experimentator can create model of this object having this model he can plan he can plan experiment he can make um, experimental design to conduct further in most optimal way real experiment after after the experiment measurements are done we collect data data 
And then we process data. Proce data processing uh, is done, uh, let's assume again, with machine learning. So we use uh, data reduction, uh, cluster analysis, classification, uh, neural networks uh, prediction or as 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 associative uh, rule search or so on. So, so this is one uh, approach. Alternatively, if we don't have possibilities to conduct the real experiment, we can make uh, numerical or computer experiments. So on our computational resource, and we try to realize what we know about our object of research in details, of course, uh, putting in first some uh, formalism. So again, we have object of research at the study, which is a biophysical process or molecular system. Then we uh, propose a model of this object. Then, of course, we need to make model of ex ex experimental equipment. So this is abbreviation for experimental equipment or uh, some environment where we put our object of research. Then we conduct computational experiment on our uh, computer or calculator or calculator or some uh, how any machine and then at the end uh, uh, we have uh, again data output which are called here x uh, and x star and y star and again we tr try to understand this data the behavior that we have from simulation so we do processing processing with uh, machine learning um, methods or with uh, any analytical approach which are used for a specific data analysis area. Okay, uh, generally speaking, we can combine experimental research and uh, theoretical research. So we co can combine real computational experiments for in form of uh, generalized generalized or real computational experiments uh, for the study. The flow chart of this uh, combination you can see uh, on, on this slide. So we have object of our research, then again we make model and then we have experiment. Yeah, So we can uh, have uh, a real experiment and we, have, we can have computational experiment. Now uh, let's assume that we would like to make advantages of two independent way of uh, investigation and we combine this. So we combine and try to use a computational experiment as a fitting model to experimental data. Fitting models in, in sense of uh, parameters, uh, parameters of equipment, parameters of uh, uh, physical processes uh, and uh, all other important things which contribute to investigation of our data set. So we have experimental data and we have simulated data. Our, uh, again, we combine uh, two uh, big data sets uh, with uh, further processing and we try to fit uh, uh, parameters, parameters of our uh, models. So finding uh, the best uh, Estimators of the parameters, uh, we uh, have to decide in uh, block eight whether we are satisfied with these results or not. So we use error analysis, uh, model um, confirmation approach, and uh, we prove somehow that we received the uh, actual uh, estim estimations of parameters and processes that we have. If we are satisfied, then we stop. We have a solution of our problem. If we are not satisfied, then we go, we, we make next iteration. We go back to block two of the model or object. We try to improve our model. So we try to put more detailization or deepen uh, our knowledge on this model. Uh, probably we can add more data if there is a possibility to collect more data to make a kind of meta-analysis or uh, we have a new se uh, extended set of uh, physical parameters uh, or we try to um, go to deeper level of um, formalization of our process so we uh, so we, we do iterations until we are not uh, well, until we are satisfied uh, in block eight with uh, a priori uh, selected criteria. Okay, this is how we deal in uh, one experiment. So let's assume now we have not one experiment, but we have many experiments like Q experiments. 
So uh, this is uh, a, a update, update of, uh, of the previous schema of analysis is presented on this slide. And uh, the first intuitive approach analyzing uh, big, uh, big data, but now coming not in the, from one experiment, but from many experiments, from many labs. Uh, so the first approach uh, would be, no, not first approach, but quite naive approach would be not going deeply in uh, the physical models, but often we just need to uh, pre, uh, classify or predict correspondence of the results to one or an another class of measurements or molecular compounds and so on. So in this uh, case, it's possible to use neural networks or deep learning, generally speaking, de de deep learning um, algorithms uh, to solve this problem. Uh, there are many examples like classification of uh, cancer images corresponding to uh, different stage of uh, cancers or healthy and unhealthy type of cancers or classification of different molecular species and samples where we need to know either it's uh, uh, one class or opposite class or third class if, if there is a multi-class uh, multi problem. So we don't need to extract physical, any physics, but we just need to know the outcome. So we can use um, uh, machine learning models, for, for example, neural networks. In this case, we generate test uh, training data. On the tra training data, we uh, teach our uh, machine learning models, so like uh, neural networks, and then uh, we predict the, what what class of the uh, outcome would be um, would be for our data. So we train on taste data, on training data, and then we uh, predict test data. And again, uh, we have a final solution to which uh, sample or class corresponds consider considered um, data set. Again, uh, we select criterion by which we uh, decide if it's enough or not enough to stop our investigation, or we return and make another cycle with uh, increasing uh, complexity of our machine learning model and so on. Okay, if we go uh, more deep in analysis and we need to, uh, we would like to uh, distinguish physics, uh, physics or biology or what is the exactly inside uh, natural processes are conducted, then we use models we use mathematical models analytical models so i will start from some analytical models then we go to simulation models so again uh, update of the analysis scheme we have on this slide so combination combination of uh, many uh, experiments is called global global analysis experiment it means that we have many experiments we can we can fix some uh, parameters which are common for some experiments, we can, we can associate them if they can be associated and we can analyze in more effective way uh, multiplying uh, statistical power of our uh, independent or dependent uh, me measurements. So as uh, models of objects, we have now analytical models or analytical solutions, if it's possible to uh, to have it. Uh, for example, for field of fluorescence spectroscopy, time result fluorescence spectroscopy, it's uh, such examples of these analytical models can be multi-exponential uh, uh, models, uh, stretch exponential models, uh, uh, polynomial, polynomial, uh, polynomial uh, decomposition, and so on. So we have models from uh, physical parameters and uh, we have uh, data analysis methods which utilize uh, uh, the numerical algorithm of solutions on the, of this method, which I uh, called like exponential uh, models. Uh, typically these methods are um, uh, less squares methods, methods of global analysis, uh, target analysis, bias analysis, and so on. So minimizing the difference between experimental data and uh, 
theoretical data uh, uh, by fitting this set of parameters we find finally solution so the optimal set of parameters a star and uh, exact uh, not exact but uh, quite acceptable uh, the model which uh, is characterized by these parameters again going to block six we uh, check if it's acceptable from the criterion given criterion for uh, our study which can can be might be not just one but several uh, criteria uh, again uh, to give you impression what could be this criteria in a uh, fluorescent spectroscopy it's a popular uh, chi square uh, reduced uh, criterion uh, criterion uh, uh, of uh, Romanovsky uh, Durbin Watson statistics uh, could be also graphical uh, uh, visualization visualization tests like uh, correlation function uh, auto correlation function and so on so uh, going uh, in several iterations we can again improve our mathematical models and we have solution uh, afterwards so uh, this is uh, works well until we uh, uh, meet real problem uh, uh, problems uh, related to more complex system more complex systems where it's quite difficult to as well what said uh, it, it was said uh, to uh, construct analytical models the, but we know how to or we can propose what is going inside and we can create uh, simulation models, simulation or Monte Carlo simulation models, so uh, from so called uh, intuitive principles, like we know our molecule, we know organization of the molecule, we, we know the distribution, so we can uh, uh, su suggest what are the parameters, what is the nature of these parameters, what the what are the parameters of the environment, and so on. And we can construct as a, uh, this model as a constructor from this. Uh, building blocks which experiment or, or uh, analysts knows so finally this um, scheme i would like uh, present and this is actually the development of this work so uh, instead of analytical models we use a simulation model in a computational uh, in glo global experiment uh, yeah so in the uh computational parts which is uh, called here too we, we use instead of analytical models we use simulation models so uh, simulation model for different experiments simulation model of uh, research object and simulation models of uh, uh, obje object and equipment and this is characterized by set of physical parameters so this is first thing the second thing that uh, we use machine learning to reduce our data so the idea we do not work as in classical approach with each data set independently so we combine our data we apply that data dimensionality reduction methods to uh, take or to obtain most informative data so-called hidden uh, knowledge uh, or most representing data. So we reduce our big data sets to most informative one. And then this most informative data we analyze with computer or simulation models. So we analyze uh, with simulation models. And this is actually novelty of the approach. So we use machine learning to reduce data and we use uh, simulation modeling to, uh, to distinguish physics of uh, or nature of object so again uh, fitting parameters physical parameters of the object we have uh, we try to reach situation when there is a best uh, concordance of uh, experimental and simulated data and we have at the end uh, our simulation exact or acceptable simulation model and estimates of physical parameters. Again, we repeat it uh, until we have uh, we are satisfied with, with results and we have solution. So, what is important to say here? Uh, I explained the upper part of the scheme, but in in principle, it's possible to uh, not in principle. It's now this commonly used to use. Uh, machine learning models to integrate machine learning models uh, in, in this case yeah and again to uh, profit from uh, 
things which are already done and working well and try to integrate in the new computer simulation approach. So what we can do, we can create simulating teaching data. And in, in this uh, by this simulation uh, teaching data, we can train uh, machine learning models like neural networks. Yeah? So we can train models and then we can use them further as in production or conveyor manner to make daily experiments and quite quick and quite effective. So in this case, uh, um, machine learning model or neural network, it's approximation model, which give, uh, which provides uh, um, connection between physical parameter in parameter space and fluorescent decays. So we train and create a neural network, and then afterwards we just apply this neural networks to real data and we obtain para physical parameters, no, not directly using um, Monte Carlo simulation or simulation models. Uh, okay, so this is actually the approach which we propose, the conception of, of uh, our data analysis approach with uh, machine learning and uh, uh, simulation modeling. Uh, there is also possibility to even to advance this approach. So we can also try to make um, a so-called physical networks, uh, neural networks. Yeah. So if we go in uh, to origin of networks, we can present them as a computation graph, and this computation graph we can uh, relate with the probability uh, variables and their probability distributions and can uh, integrate or can formulate the interaction of uh, random variables to this computation graph. And if we are able to create a good connection of, of these natures, then we can make a so-called physical neural network model and can directly apply to uh, analysis of our big data. So the beauty of this, of course, it's there is a trend to use neural networks. And this is one thing. The second thing is that we have um, now in public access uh, neural networks uh, libraries like Keras, TensorFlow, Terreno, and so on, PyTorch, uh, which can quite uh, easily be integrated in the data analysis scheme. So an um, integration of physical networks on, in, in some situations, if uh, of course the situations are sensible, can uh, replace the Monte Carlo simulation models. Okay, this is a methodology of uh, our development and uh, we go further and try to analyze real uh, experimental data and systems. So in today's talk, I uh, didn't, uh, I will not mention all uh, experimental systems and area of research, uh, which is quite broad. I would like to just to show most interesting uh, and to mention most interesting, interesting situations where it can be applied. Uh, what, what is common in all uh, these um, studies? That is applied in, in uh, uh, fluorescent spectroscopy. And also is common is, is the study of object of biophysical systems, in particular formalization uh, of description of object and the observations, analysis, and modeling algorithms. So this table uh, su summarizes um, the systems that we study. So the table has uh, four columns. Uh, so the first one is the object. So I will explain what object we are studying, then what are the observations or samples, then goal or task, data analysis task, and experimental equipment. Not all of them, but some experimental equipment that can be used. So the first one is study or object of study is process is electronic energy transfer in molecular system. So why it's so interesting, it can be used in many applied applied uh, tasks. Uh, no, uh, one of this uh, popular task is to construct a photonic uh, energy solar cells, so which ideally would replace the uh, would be examples of alternative uh, alternative for the future alternative energy uh, resources. So what are the observations? Uh, 
it's uh, the molecular complexes which are studied through the uh, fluorescence, uh, flu their fluorescence. For example, fluorescence spectra, uh, emission or absorption spectra, or time resolve fluorescence decays. The task is estimation of rates constant and energy transfer efficiency. And the uh, number of experimental te techniques, they are time, uh, single photon counting, phase modulation, uh, fluorescence, spectroscopy, and so on. The second object is actin poly polymerization, which is quite critically, quite important in cancer, uh, cancer diseases, in um, cell uh, invasion, just to understand this genetic uh, Ill sickness. Uh, so observations are cells or fluorescence of uh, protein dyes which uh, participate in actin polymerization. Task is uh, to study uh, protein polymerization, uh, estimation of parameters, parameters of diffusion, bindings uh, uh, of actin um, proteins and actin related uh, proteins. What are, uh, what are the experimental equipment is uh, fluorescence microscopy equipment, uh, for example, working uh, as uh, using method fluorescent recovery after photo uh, The third object, uh, for example, it can be cancer cells, uh, observations, microscopy images of cells. They are labeled with luminescent or fluorescent dyes, and we can detect uh, signals from oncoproteins or labeled on coproteins. The task is uh, estimation of number of cancer cells and stage of development of disease and so on. Experimental equipment, optical and luminescence microscopy. Uh, uh, then uh, uh, the fourth and uh, fifth uh, examples of applications, uh, they uh, are more um, uh, biophysical or biological of biological directions, it's uh, working with uh, genome sequencing results. Uh, one of uh, these uh, tasks is uh, investigation of alternative transcripts for oncogenes and uh, alternative RNA mo molecules. And also uh, another technique is uh, protein uh, aggregation in a new uh, in new diseases and new samples. So I will not go deeply in this explanation. So these are uh, five uh, ex nice examples where approach can be applied and uh, can uh, provide new information which is hardly reachable with classical data analysis methods. So again, uh, going more deeply to uh, proving of uh, Work work of our developed approach. We show two examples. So first example is application of developed uh, integrated data analysis to analysis of fluorescence lifetime image micro microscopy. It's the abbreviation FLIM. Uh, and second one uh, would be for uh, fluorescence fluctuation spectroscopy. So the uh, adaptation for this research, the algorithm of working approach is uh, briefly shown here. I will outline main steps. So the formulation is following. The first, uh, we perform hierarchical cluster analysis of fluorescent decay curves in the space of original features. Then we identify clusters of fluorescent decays to some degree of similarity. And we, what is important, we calculate medoids. So medoids, uh, these are, uh, in, in this case, fluorescence decays, which are, which are situated in the center of each cluster. Or if we say by you know, uh, words of uh, analysis, it's uh, um, observations which have the uh, smallest distance between other uh, observations in this class. Yeah. Okay. The second step is uh, we apply the data dimensionality reduction method, which we we use uh, principal component analysis for some reasons. Uh, it's uh, quite uh, simple to realize. It's quite quick, and actually, it's the most popular method, which is easy to interpret. Uh, and to have quite good results. But of course, it's uh, possible to use more advanced uh, methods like independent component analysis, uh, uh, coordinate, uh, uh, co principal coordinate analysis, or recently very popular UMAP method, or TSNI method, or 
any other method. So the step three, if the data clusters are not separated, then we assume that only one fluorescent uh, or molecule compound is present. Otherwise, uh, allow the presence, uh, we, we suggest presence more than uh, one uh, molecular compound uh, in the system. Step four, we analyze the midroids of each cluster with uh, physical models and we uh, estimate or determine a parameter of molecular compounds which explains uh, to us the physics of, uh, of uh, the system. And this optimization, uh, this fitting of parameters, we usually do with optimization algorithms. So uh, the results of application you can see uh, on this slide. I will just briefly explain what we did. So we uh, made the simulation of several systems, uh, uh, starting from simple one where we have just two dyes. Then we uh, 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 made more complex system. We add more dyes and energy transfer processes. So then we compare our approach that we developed and classical approach where we analyzed uh, individually each data set. What we've got, we, we had uh, quite significant improvements. It means that we have more exact estimation of these parameters. In particular, we estimated parameters of lifetimes of molecules. So they uh, equal to um, uh, some porphyrin molecules, uh, which are quite popular used in uh, photonic organic solar cells. So in classical analysis, you can see there is uh, two nanoseconds for one species and uh, 1.4 nanoseconds for second species. So they're quite close to each other and it's, it's quite difficult to resolve them by using classical approach. In our approach, it was possible to resolve. So you can see the data which we generated. This is, uh, I think, more than 500 uh, fluorescent decay cars. Each one consists quite a lot of data points, more than 1,000. And uh, applying cluster analysis, so we see uh, two clusters, and uh, these two clusters correspond to different molecular species with different lifetimes. On a principal com component analysis diagram, so uh, X direction is principal component one, uh, Y direction is principal component two, we see nicely two clusters of different fluorescent species are separated. And then we take midroids from one cluster and second cluster, and we fit midroids with uh, uh, physical model. So we then we have uh, estimation of parameters. So uh, 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 resuming this, we can conclude that uh, our approach allows to obtain more accurate estimates of recent parameters, demonstrates reliable conversion of optimization algorithm to global uh, minimum. So and it's provide computational performance by the number of calculations of the object functions, which is uh, crucial when using simulation model for analysis analyzing complex system. Okay, then we go to second application area. It's a fluorescence fluctuation spectroscopy. Uh, so again, we apply our approach and uh, compare with a classical one. Actually, the classical approach which was not able for some complex system even to, uh, to solve these problems. And the algorithms, adaptation of approach to uh, which is shown here as algorithm, is presented on the slide. Uh, again, I briefly read the um, steps. The first step, we calculate histogram of the number of photon counts based on the recorded fluorescence location data. So we need a reference uh, sample where we have just one molecular species you can see on, on the left uh, diagram. And then we have tested uh, sample where we have more than one or probably one molecular species. So, a reference sample is a typically monomer solution and test sample uh, can integrate oligomeric uh, more than one uh, molecular species. Then we apply principal component analysis or more complicated uh, data re dimensionality reduction method. If the relevant uh, fractions of reference uh, and test samples for the first main components do not differ, then we assume that there is no oligo oligomers or uh, several forms of uh, proteins, and we stop the algorithm. Otherwise, we assume the presence of oligomers and we continue algorithm. Step four, we perform hierarchical cluster analysis. So first, we uh, perform this on our uh, reference system to see where is the threshold. Yeah? So where is the threshold to be distinguished for monomer and not monomer, and then we have on our test uh, system. So we use a threshold that we find uh, found for monomer, and then 
we can exactly uh, cut the uh, number of clusters which correspond to different oligomer structures. So, and uh, finally, step five on scatter plot refers to principal component. We display uh, different uh, forms of proteins which are prevalent. So, I would like to say that by classical uh, approach, it's uh, classical approach. It means we individually uh, analyze the data sets with existing models. It's quite difficult to re resolve uh, different molecular species. So, we applied uh, data analysis approach to several systems. So first, we uh, checked this, proved this with simulation data. You, you can see here a, a, a simulation results. So this is um, uh, two different species were simulated and the approach was uh, able to find this two different species. You can see at the bottom plot of principal component analysis, uh, two clouds of different species. Then we applied to real uh, experimental data and experimental data were GFP monomer um, in some uh, environment, and then was uh, uh, interesting protein, rock core protein, which is uh, key protein in Parkinson's disease. So uh, for GFP monomer, you can see it's, uh, it's um, experimental data correspond just to one, to one species. You, you can see the shape of dendrogram, and we see quite spherical uh, sphere a spherical cloud in the principal component analysis uh, sp space of two main components. When we see our protein, yeah, so of interest, we see that it's different from GFP and uh, we have distinctly two different um, molecular structures of, of this protein. And uh, we see on principal component analysis um, diagram that uh, there are two different uh, oligomer forms in the system. So again, we obtained the results, which allowed to conclude that approach um, uh, gives more accurate uh, estimation of characteristics than classical approach. And also, it's possible to visualize to visualize the data in a dimensional in reduced dimension space. Okay, this was two examples of uh, the uh, application of data analysis approach. So the uh, next step, okay, we developed uh, the conception of strategy. Now it's important to uh, construct the um, programming environment or software application or computational tools that users can uh, can utilize this uh, for for the works for the real practical works. And of course, uh, not going the work for us. We, of we uh, searched uh, existing markets uh, with software, I, uh, with software developments or for solutions which can be applied for this uh, type of tasks. What's interesting uh, for fluorescent spectroscopy is there are plenty of um, software packages and uh, calculation tools which can be applied. So they have nice uh, simulation models, nice data analysis programs, nice databases, but no dedicated software which integrates machine learning and computer simulation facilities uh, for, the, for analysis of data. Uh, however, there are pioneer publications, 2021, 2020, which already try to make uh, some calculations. So not, not in the uh, form of final packages, but at least uh, some proposed, some computational tools with neural networks, which in principle can be used uh, as um, uh, in, in the same manner. So the, uh, our goal is to develop of the conception of digital software platform for the simulation model and machine learning analysis of fluorescent spectroscopy data. So we analyzed uh, different uh, programming solutions. So for um, uh, data mining, machine learning, there are uh, plenty of tools. So you, you can see them on the dedicated uh, sites, uh, websites. I will just would like to mention more interesting. They are Beka, Tanagra, RapidMiner, Neem, Orange, Java, Python, and R projects. Most uh, uh, suitable for our reasons, I, I would say it's Scala, Python, and R platform. So Scala are more for industry, big project, Python uh, are more for data analysis, engineer, and uh, deep learning neural network project and tasks, tasks and R platforms uh, are known to be 
uh, well used by statistical community, mathematicians, and nowadays in, also in, in bioinformatics. So we decided to select a uh, direction of our platform. Why? Because it's have some advantages. So it's uh, optimized, it provides optimized structures for representing data object, optimization of uh, programming tools, implementation of uh, com uh, Compute, uh, computation of algorithm, a huge set of uh, processing algorithms, statistical machine learning, computing resources of scientific community, and also uh, uh, developers of RStudio provide um, a package for creating web interfaces. It's called Shiny Package. So quite many advantages and one very big disadvantage. It's very slow. So, but it's now in a very slow, I mean, basic version, but now it's, um, it's a, a much updated and uh, many different solutions are proposed, starting from parallel, uh, uh, paralleling of quotes and are accelerating by including different other possibilities like uh, uh, languages of programming, like uh, Fortran, uh, C++, uh, also Python, uh, Java, and other acceleration tools. So for, for these reasons, we decided to use our platform. So the digital platform can integrate the research scheme for setting biophysical process or molecular compounds using a complex approach based on simulation modeling and learning methods. So I outline here uh, six main uh, steps which we uh, include in our uh, conception of digital platform. Of, of course, it, it can be modified, it can be extended and updated. So the first step is data loading, second, uh, simulation modeling, third, clustering, uh, fourth, dimensional reduction, uh, fifth is data analysis uh, with um, fitting parameters by models, and six, uh, six is a visualiz visualization of results. So as a demonstrative example, uh, we develop integrated met met uh, methodology and implement it into the computational uh, platform Flora Sim Studio, which is devoted to processing fluorescent uh, time resolved fluorescent cars of molecular system obtained from uh, film experiments. So you can uh, go to the website, which is shown here, and you can test uh, this uh, um, computational approach. Uh, you can test with your data. Or you can simulate. You can simulate data and run over this uh, over step of this analysis. So, and uh, I shortly uh, uh, present you the windows of the analysis. So, analysis pipeline is shown uh, on the uh, names of this uh, bookmarks. So, you go from the left to the right. So. Uh, first, you uh, they download data, then a step of modeling, clustering, data dimension, uh, dimensionality reduction uh, step, data analysis, visualization, and so on. So this uh, bookmark shows you how you uh, download your data. You can download your data, or you or you can switch on uh, analysis of uh, modeling data. So this is fluorescent decay curves, which uh, which are download. You can see in this two dimen uh, two D uh, dimensional plot or in three dimensional plot. So the on the right panel you can see uh, a window for simulation modeling. You you can select model, so like uh, one exponential model, two exponential, or one spe molecular species, uh, several molecular species and uh, can put the parameters like number of data sets, uh, number of um, noise characteristics, uh, and other experimental equipment uh, parameters. So if, if you would like to test uh, your system or to test how the computational approach works. So then you do a cluster analysis. We realized now uh, a recall cluster, but of course the more advanced uh, cluster analysis uh, can be integrated. So a recall clustering with uh, different types of distance measures and the cluster connection um, uh, methods like uh, uh, Centroid, uh, VART, and so on. And for distance uh, measuring, there is a new, um, Euclidean, uh, Manhattan, or uh, city block, maximum, and so on. So the next uh, bookmark or step of analysis show you application of principal component analysis. It's possible to make centering, scaling, and you can see distribution of variation for each component. 
So you can see uh, data in a uh, data plot for different components, and also you can see the, the distribution of lots of uh, distribution of different molecular compounds on the uh, lines of principal components. If, if you scroll down, so it's, here it's not possible to see because it's not shown, it's, it looks quite big or long web page if we go down. So we select medoids and then we fit this medoids with physical models which are shown on the left panel. So you, se you select the initial guesses for parameters, number of simulation counts, and you try to simulate. So you see here the uh, experimental data, data, black um, uh, curves, black data, and then I try to fit them with uh, simulated um, uh, simulated model. And I, I use quite a lot uh, simulations, so the simulated the curve is quite smooth, you, you can see, so it looks like analytical line. As a criterion of uh, quality, you can see chi-square test, it's a reduced chi-square test, and good uh, fitting, it should be close to one. And uh, also graphical test of uh, for visual expression as uh, weighted residuals, they should be randomly distribu distributed around zero and autocorrelation function. The, uh, then the page of uh, visualization of results, you can see data in the uh, principal component 3D uh, space. So one dot is one data set. So one fluorescent decay curve. So we found two species and the green lines uh, connect two medoids of two clusters. And this, uh, you, uh, how on the right uh, diagram, you can see how they looks in the original space uh, of fluorescent uh, decay data. And this picture in the principal component um, um, diagram shown for all considered uh, principal components. So data are analyzed, we can save parameters, we can save uh, uh, experimental and uh, theoretical data in, in the uh, on, on the files. So this is how it works and I, I would like to say this that this example shows the full step of uh, data analysis with simulation modeling and um, the same approach can be done or uh, transferred to another uh, fluorescent spectroscopy research area. So now I came to conclusion that we developed uh, the integrated data analysis methodology based on simulation model and machine learning algorithms has been developed. It has been applied to analysis of time real fluorescent spectroscopy data and fluorescent fluctuation spectroscopy data and integrated machine learning data analysis pipeline enhance the efficiency of biophysical research. The conception of digital platform for processing fluorescent spectroscopy data has been developed. Uh, the proposed methodology of digital plant is a real lasting computational flat platform for some students that lets to uh, automate processing fluorescent decay cars and molecular system and digital platform can be extended by including novel machine learning models and algorithms. So I would like to uh, uh, acknowledge uh, my colleagues, uh, actually my uh, supervisor, Professor Vladimir Ponasovich, and my boss, uh, head of the Department of System Analysis and Computer Modeling, uh, Dr. Viktor Skakun. And also, I would like to uh, thank Belarusian State University for uh, financial support, which has nowadays a uh, jubilee, is uh, uh, 100 years of foundation. And uh, I would like to thank you for your uh, kind attention. And please, I'm open for the questions. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much for this uh, very interesting presentation that we have today. Uh, so I don't see right now any questions and uh, in, in the chat, but uh, while everyone is uh, thinking of their questions. So uh, right now you show this software package and all the screenshots. So you were talking about that R provides you ability to work with uh, reactive web interfaces. So the application which you shown, is it a web application or it's a standalone application? This one, yeah. Uh, th this is this is web application. Uh, so it, it, it is done, it is done uh, integrating the R codes, C++ codes, uh, code, uh, there is a package which is called RCPP, which uh, allows to 
users uh, to make C++ programming, and I use C++ programming to make computer uh, simulation models, and they work quite quick. If we do this in R, uh, it's very slow, and it's uh, really um, uh, slowed down the working program, uh, work in progress. Uh, then, uh, uh, developers of R Studio uh, propose a package which is called Shiny. And with this uh, sh uh, package Shiny, we can create the, this so called uh, um, interface, uh, reactive interface, and we can uh, place them on the uh, server of uh, uh, developers of Shiny. Yeah. Oh. I see. I see. It looks. But really it's possible to make, uh, in, of course, uh, in, uh, independent uh, application, your own uh, standalone application, or not connected to Shiny server. So it's possible to host it in your own university and uh, in our own university. For example, uh, similar um, development for or uh, or F Hunter we have. Uh, uh, for another project, and we host it in our Belarusian State University. Yeah. I see. Yeah, because uh, yeah, it looks really good. So uh, and in, in more in the style of uh, standalone application that never a web page. So that's why I asked. So because with all this chart, it looks re really nice. Is it right now hosted in kind of available way so people can just uh, access it and play with these uh, tools, or this is just internal? Your team is using it. Yes. Oh, yeah, I, I missed this part. Please visit. I will be very uh, grateful if you would visit this. You would test and then send me if you find some errors or some unclear things. I will try to improve this. And you can see the paper which is which was published in the summertime in Journal of Applied Spectroscopy in English. So it's possible to download it and to read in details uh, the improvement of this consistency. So please use it. I will be very happy to have your feedback. Sure, uh, and I really like when uh, I see here at Open Dice mentioning of the page the papers which I just published. So it means that we're here talk, talking about really hot topics which I just you know came out of the printer just <laughs> a couple months ago. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, so I still don't see any questions from our auditory. Uh, I think that uh, the presentation was really very self-explanative and very interesting because you have a lot of demonstrations and what, what is exactly uh, you're talking about. So it was very interesting. Thank you so much for uh, this talk. So it will be available maybe today or tomorrow on YouTube and with slides on our official web page. So you'll be able to share this with your uh, students and colleagues. So everybody who was not able to, I know several people who really wanted to participate today, uh, but they have conflicting meetings or they have classes or whatever. So uh, we expect to have a number of uh, views on, on our YouTube channel of your uh, talk. So uh, counting to five to get any questions if we have one, two, three, four, Five. Okay, so I still don't see any questions, but in general, our auditory is pretty quiet, so it's <laughs> it, 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 it's it's okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we were really glad to host your talk today, and so really hope to see you again once uh, in our stage sometime in the future. Uh, Ivan, I also wanted to thank you for giving me this opportunity to show you my uh, recent results and to have a quite a wide audience uh, to present uh, recent uh, ideas. So thank you very much. Also thank you very much to listeners and participators of the, our uh, seminar. So thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you everybody. And uh, see you next time in December on our next talk. Okay, uh, have a nice day, evening or afternoon. Uh, bye everyone. Goodbye.